Hey guys, Will here, you're watching Boosted Autos and today we are going to be retrofitting BMW apps into my M235i, so let's get going. Okay, so we're going to break this up into a couple of different sections. So first of all, I'm going to explain to you basically what the BMW Apps Retrofit Package is, what it's looking to achieve, and why it's something that you might be interested in. As part of that, I'll show you the iDrive system as it stands right now so you can see where we're starting from and where we're going to end up. Secondly, I'm going to take you through the process of actually setting up your computer and the equipment that you're going to need to do this retrofit kit. And lastly, I'm going to take you through the whole upgraded system in detail, all the menus, all the extra options, so that you can see exactly what you're going to get for your money. Okay, so the first thing that we need to understand is exactly what retrofitting and coding is. So coding is something that a lot of people might have heard of before and coding is the ability to tweak and adjust settings in your car after you've already purchased the car. So the way we normally would do that is with a OBD2 cable like this which plugs into your OBD2 port on the car which accesses the various computer systems inside the car and then plugs into your PC or laptop on this side either with an RJ45 Ethernet connector or a USB connector depending on the model of the car. So what that allows you to do is tweak and adjust settings, things like you know how many flashes the indicators give when you tap the stalk whether the mirrors fold or not automatically when you lock the car, whether the windows or sunroof close when you lock the car, you know, little things like that. So features that are already built into the vehicle, but either enabled or disabled from factory. So it gives you the option to tweak and adjust those settings that you normally wouldn't be able to access through the system itself. Now, what retrofitting does is it adds a layer on top of that and actually allows you to add packages to the vehicle, either genuine or aftermarket, after you've already purchased the vehicle. So in the case of the BMW, BMW apps package, what we're doing is we're retrofitting the genuine BMW apps package, but we're doing it after the vehicle's already rolled off the production line. So this is, in this case, this is a package that BMW don't actually offer as an upgrade to cars that have already rolled off the production line. So you can't go to BMW and say, hey, I've decided that I want BMW apps added to my car that didn't have it from factory. At least that's the case for this particular model anyway. BMW apps was never actually an option for this car, but in cases where you can retrospectively add features, you'll find that BMW will charge you an absolutely exorbitant amount of money to do so. Now, to give you an example, this particular car as a base package when the car was bought new was about $78,000 Australian. By the time it was fully optioned, the price of the car was closer to $100,000. So we're looking at $20,000 plus worth of stuff which you could add to the car just to fully spec it. Now, obviously a lot of that stuff is things like different trim, wheels, body kits, stuff like that. But a lot of it is also things like navigation, parking systems. Now, a lot of that stuff is physical hardware, but a lot of it is also just software. So it's as simple as just switching something on in the settings, but unfortunately you can't access those settings unless you're a BMW technician. So you're kind of stuck. So if we take a look at the iDrive system in the car now, we can see that there's not a whole lot of useful stuff there. So We've got a couple of phone numbers that we can call if we're in trouble or we need roadside assistance, stuff like that. And we've got an internet browser and that is pretty much it. There's no applications there. There's no smarts to it at all. So if we want to do things like play music from our mobile phone, stuff like that, we need to do it all via Bluetooth, which obviously means you're getting slightly lower quality audio. So what the BMW Apps Retrofit Package from Bimatech does is actually gives you a whole bunch of extra functionality here, which you wouldn't have if you hadn't selected it from factory when you ordered the car. So let me take you through the options quickly. Now, I'll just load it up on my phone, but I'll also take you through on the PC as well so you can see for yourself. So the first thing that we want to note here is that this is a genuine activation of the BMW Apps Package for your specific VIN. So it's not some dodgy pirated software that they're loading onto your car and charging you money for. It's nothing dodgy at all. It's a genuine activation. Activation. So that gives you a bit of peace of mind from the onset. But you can see here there's a whole bunch of additional apps which you'll have access to, including things like TuneIn Radio, Spotify is going to be a big one for me, Pandora Radio, the Eco Pro Analyzer, Calendar System, Web Radio, Twitter, you name it, it's on there. So you can look through the list there yourself on your screen right now. But some of the stuff that isn't mentioned here is things like being able to type in a destination on your phone and having it send it straight to the iDrive system in your car so that you're not having to spend time on the little iDrive knob trying to type in addresses and stuff like that, which we all know takes forever. So really what we're gonna be achieving here is unlocking the full potential of the iDrive system so that we can use all the features and stuff as if it was fully unlocked from the beginning. So how does all 
of this actually works. So what happens is when you order the package on the Bimatech website, they'll mail you the OBD2 connector which you'll need to physically connect your laptop to your car. What they'll do is they'll send you a bunch of instructions to set up your computer as well. So obviously all of this is pretty complex and there's a good chance that you might screw something up if you were to do it all yourself, but you don't need to worry because the way all this works is they're actually connecting to your laptop and doing all the work for you. So you sit in the car with your laptop open, you open up a team viewer session, you've got a VP tunneling program installed as well called Hamachi, and that allows them to access your computer as if they were sitting in the car themselves. So it's really, really cool the way it works. And um, yeah, they, they do it all for you so you don't have to worry about it so it's as simple as just following the instructions that they'll send you through Skype and getting it all done but there is a couple of things that you do need to set up beforehand so I'll pull the instructions up on the screen for you now so we've got to install a program called Hamachi which is a VPN tunneling program that allows them to access the ports on your computer to connect to the car as if it was their own computer over in Warsaw or in Poland we also need to install the Bimatech application as well as team viewer 7 now make sure you do follow the instructions here that you'll get sent to an absolute T because it's very specific in the version that you have to install and the steps that you need to follow to install it so look Look, it is, it is nice and simple, but you just need to make sure that you follow those instructions very, very clearly. So along with the instructions, they'll also send you a link to a calendar system, which allows you to book in a convenient time for you with the remote coder as well. So look, it's all pretty straightforward and simple to arrange, but there is a couple of things that I think are important for you to know as well. Now, the first and most important thing is that throughout the time of the session, so throughout the coding session, your engine's gonna have to be running. So obviously engine running means exhaust fumes. So you're not gonna wanna be locked inside your garage with the engine running, because obviously Obviously you will get poisoned. So we obviously want to have the car outside or at least reversed out far enough that the exhaust fumes aren't going to go inside your garage, but we also need to have internet access. Now you might be thinking, well that's no problem, I'll just run a long ethernet cable from my router, but if you've got an F-Series BMW, you've got an RJ45 connection on the coding cable, so you're not going to be able to plug in both. So you need a Wi-Fi connection, particularly if you've got a F-Series BMW. So what you'll need to do is make sure that the car's in a position where your exhaust gases aren't going to poison you, but you've also got a solid Wi-Fi connection to your internet. So what I did was I had the car back out just slightly, so my exhaust fumes would all go into the atmosphere, but I was still comfortable and safe inside my garage with a nice solid internet connection. So that's the first thing that you need to be aware of. The second thing is that because it is going to take a bit of time, you're probably going to want to have power for your laptop as well. You don't want to risk your battery going dead halfway through the session. Obviously, if the ink if the connection's interrupted while they're in the middle of actually programming an ECU, something could go really, really wrong and you could actually brick the ECU and have to replace the whole thing, which would not be a cheap exercise. So we want to take steps to make sure that we're set up as safely with a nice solid internet connection and power available as well. So we're not going to have any connection interruptions. So you're also going to want to make sure that you have your smartphone with you as well as a connection cable to connect it to the plug inside your armrest because you will need to activate the BMW connected app on your phone as part of this whole process. So it's a good idea to install the BMW connected app on your phone before you start as well so that you're ready to go and you're not having to wait to set things up while you've got the session going because it does all get a little bit busy you've got the laptop here and you're kind of cramped and you're trying to do stuff so getting all of that set up ahead of time is a big help all right so if you followed all of those steps you're set up ready to go so what we'll do next is we'll travel back in time and I'll show you how everything actually played out now as I mentioned before this did take about an hour so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just skim through the interesting bits there was a lot of times where I was just kind of sitting there waiting for something to happen now as you'll see in the video, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on on the screen of your laptop because they're not actually doing the coding on your laptop. They're doing it remotely through the VPN tunnel. So there's times where you'll be sitting for 15, even 20 minutes, I think even up to half an hour at one point, I was just sitting there. Nothing was going on on my laptop. Nothing was happening on the car. And I was just kind of sitting there going, well, I don't know if there's a problem or what's going on. So you need to be patient. You need to just sit there and wait for them to send you instructions. They do talk you through the process to an extent, but look, it, it, it was a little bit nerve wracking having never done anything like that before, just because I'm an anxious person and obviously it's an expensive car and I was really scared that something might get screwed up, but they were very, very, very professional. And um, you know, they only told me what I needed to know as we all went through. And if I asked a question, they did respond, but you just gotta sit there, you just gotta be patient, let them do their thing and um, look I didn't have any problems everything went exactly how it was meant to go but anyway let's jump in we'll travel back in time and I'll show you how it played out all right so we're set up ready to go we've got Skype and I've started the session with the technician so he's just asked me for the team viewer ID and password so I'll just respond and get that running team viewer 7 open it 
All right, so I've sent them the ID and password. So what that allows them to do is access the computer basically so they can control the computer as if they were me. Plug one side of the coding cable, the LAN cable into the PC. So we're plugging the LAN cable in. And then start the engine, so we'll do that. Right, so engine's running, and then plug the ABD port into the car, so we'll reach down and plug that in. Detection recording, seven, occurred, GPS connected. So they're just pinging google.com, presumably to check that they've got an internet connection. So it's a very weird feeling having my computer's not showing anything, so obviously the coding's not being done on my computer, it's been done through the VPN tunnel, which is why I can't actually see anything, but my combination meters have been flicking on and off, and my iDrive system just rebooted itself as well, so obviously they're doing something. It's all a little bit nerve-wracking, because I have absolutely no control over what's going on, but I assume that they know what they're doing, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, there it goes again. So my iDrive has just disappeared and rebooting. Oh, it's so weird having all this stuff happen when I've got no control of it. <laughs> and again. Now, if you're wondering, that M Performance logo there was previously coded via USB, and I do have another video explaining how all that works. So that was really easy. They sent me a file to put on a USB stick, and I just plugged it into the car, and it did it all for me. But the stuff we're doing today is a little bit different and a little bit more involved. One more reboot. It's hard to, um, it's hard to film because I don't know what's going to happen when I'm just sort of sitting in the cockpit, <laughs> things happening and I don't know what's going on, so... But everything seems to be going well, they haven't messaged me with any disaster stories or any problems, so... I guess everything's okay. Meanwhile, we're just pinging Google here to, I guess, make sure that there's a stable internet connection. I'm guessing they're just keeping an eye on this so they can see if the connection drops out, they don't want to be coding while there's an intermittent connection. All right, so everything's kind of rebooting and doing stuff at the moment. Not sure what's going on, but everything's shut down. All right, so that was really, really scary. The whole, he said, don't touch anything. And then the whole car just went completely dead. He said, switch off the engine, don't touch anything. And the car just went completely dead. I mean, every single light, everything went out. And then he asked me to start the car up again and it did start, which I was terrified of. And he's asked me to go back into the BMW menu. Sorry, I've just got to talk to him now. Asking me what my model phone is. All right, so he's asked me to connect it to the armrest USB, which I'm doing. Okay, so the technicians sent me a bunch of data and information and stuff to check through, but everything seems like it's working for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap off and unplug everything. We'll come back in tomorrow again and I'll run you through all the menus and everything because it's getting quite late at night now and I need to turn off the car so I don't annoy the neighbours. But um, yeah, we'll get stuck into it again tomorrow. So the first little change that we've made is putting the M Performance logo on the dash when you first unlock the car instead of the M235i logo. We'll switch on the ignition quickly and I'll show you the other little thing that we've done in the cluster as well. 
That's my um, dash cam talking to you there. So when I press the BC button on the stalk here now, I've got an extra additional option on the dash there. You can see kilometers an hour showing just there. So that wasn't there previously. So that's a digital speedometer. So we've got our date, nothing, our distance to empty, our efficiency, our real-time efficiency, our average speed, and then our current speed in kilometers per hour or miles per hour, depending on whereabouts you are in the world. So that's an additional feature that's been coded into the dash. Now you can see down here, the M235i logo does stay there. You can't change that one to M Performance, but better than nothing to update that other one to the M Performance logo. So we'll switch that back off again. And you can see it goes back to the nice M Performance logo there, which is nice and cool. Another thing we've done as well is code the automatic engine off so it remembers the previous state. So we see if we start the car, it's already pressed. So normally when you start the car, it'd be like that, but now it's gonna remain like that. It sounds silly, but that was actually the one thing that annoyed me more than anything else on this car. So now I don't have to remember to press the button every single time I start the car. What was happening is I'd pull up at a set of traffic lights, the engine would switch off, and oh, it just makes me cranky because it's a performance car. It shouldn't even do that. But anyway, not a problem anymore because we've coded it out. All right, so let's have a look at some of the changes that we've made now. You'll see here I've got split screen turned off because I don't want you guys to see exactly where I live on the GPS map. But other than that, it's all set up exactly the same way as it was before. So we'll jump down to the connected drive menu. And you can see now we've got a bunch of extra options here. So we'll start off with BMW Live. We'll go into that. And you can see here we've got news and weather. So you can set up news feeds under news. So we'll jump in and you can add a news feed from here. So we won't take a look in detail at that because you get the idea of that, but we'll go back and jump into weather. You can see here it gives me the weather forecast for my local area or wherever I'm located currently on the GPS map. So it'll pick up your location off GPS and then automatically load the weather report that's relevant for that area, which is cool. And you can see here it scrolls through, shows you all the various different forecasts for the days coming for the day coming up. So morning, midday, evening, and night. You can scroll forward to the next day. How many days in advance? We goes up to Tuesday. So it's Friday today, so we've got four days in advance. And we can also adjust our location from here as well. So forecast at the destination that we're traveling to, any location of your choice, or at the current location as well, which is handy. So we jump back out of BMW Live and we'll scroll down to BMW Apps because this is where the really cool stuff happens. So the way this works is it needs to be connected to your phone via the BMW Connected app, which I will screenshot for you here now so you can see what it looks like. So you need to download that app, you go into the app and we can set it up to log in with touch. And you can see here when it's connected to the car, it gives you a nice little overview. It shows you what your car is, the amount of fuel you've got remaining and your range remaining. So if we go down to destinations, and we type in an address. So say I want to go to my work at MRT Performance. I press on MRT Performance here and it'll tell me how long it's going to take me to get there. I can press go and you can see there it loads it straight onto the dash of the car which is really cool. So it saves you having to type everything in on the, on the iDrive system which you know it does work quite well but it can be quite cumbersome and what I found is that I'd often just use the GPS on the phone rather than the GPS in the car simply because it would take me a couple of minutes to type in the destination that I wanted whereas with this it's really really straightforward and easy so that is probably going to be one of the more useful features for sure. We'll jump back out to the hub and we scroll down so you can see here the apps that are compatible with the system. So Spotify Music is probably going to be the one that I'll use the most. So we'll take a quick look at that now. I'll put the phone back down again. So if we go to the multimedia button on our iDrive system, you can see now we've got a new icon called Additional Apps. So we'll tap on that. And that gives us a list of the available apps which are currently installed on our mobile device. So the app has to be installed on your mobile device for it to work on the car. So we'll go into Spotify. And I'm going to turn the volume all the way down because I don't want to get flagged for copyright infringement. But you can see here we've got a nice console that shows us what's playing on Spotify. Now the really cool thing about this is that it does give you the ability to go back into your Spotify menu. You can look at your recently played tracks through here. More importantly, you can go into your library and actually browse through various artists. albums, songs, 
The most important one for me is playlists. So we can go through the various different playlists that we've set up on Spotify and access them directly from the car itself. So the ability to go through your playlists directly on the car's console is awesome because what I find is often my kids, for example, will say, I want to listen to this song or I want to listen to this song. And you just can't touch your phone while you're driving because it's dangerous. And in a lot of areas like where I live, it's actually completely illegal to touch your phone while your car's in motion. So I can't touch the phone to change my playlist. So all I can do is scroll back and forth either from my steering wheel or on the console between the tracks that are in the current playlist or the current album that is selected on the phone, but I can't actually change playlists. So this does away with that problem. The only catch is that you do have to be connected to the car with your cable to, to do all this, but that's not a big deal. So we'll jump back out of that again, go back to our connected drive menu. So connected drive down to additional apps again and we need to launch the app on our phone so we'll go back into it here the next one I want to look at is the BMW lap timer so we'll jump down to additional apps M lap timer this one is really cool so we agree to the disclaimer and it launches the app on our phone as well so you can see here it's launching the app on the phone and we've got it up on our console here. So this app allows you to do a couple of really cool things. It'll record your GPS signature while you drive around a track and then actually record all the data from the car at the same time to overlay it over a, um, over a visualization of you driving around the track, which is also referenced on Google Maps as well. So it'll show you actually driving around the track. Now I'm not driving the car at the moment, but what I can do is I can go into one of the demo sessions that's been pre-recorded on the system and you can see here it shows you your best lap time, your top speed that you reached and what the weather was like as well. So I'll quickly show you on my handset here what it actually looks like when you've recorded data. So we're going to a previously recorded session here. You can see it's overlaying on a map around the track so it's showing your speed. So as you drive around it obviously records what the track is, knows what the circuit is and then it can also, because it knows your GPS position, it can overlay a satellite view of the track as well. So it's very, very cool. You can see also it shows the steering input is handy. Play again. So we'll scroll across to a different session and compare. Hit play. And you can see it shows the two different speeds and positions around the track as it goes in the steering inputs as well. So it's very cool. You can also see where you were braking and accelerating, what your RPM was as a graph, which is very cool. G-force meter as well, which is very cool. GoPro, so it'll actually show what the GoPro was recording at what point around the track. And throttle input, so throttle position input. So very, very, very handy for the track. So one of the really cool things that you can do with this is control a GoPro which is mounted on the car out of reach while you're driving. So you can see my GoPro here. I go to the camera setting. I say turn camera on. GoPro turns on. And then when I go back and start recording my lap times, the GoPro starts recording and then I stop and the GoPro stops recording again. So that means I can have the camera mounted anywhere on the car and I can control it while I'm driving. Very, very, very cool indeed. And you see there, there's also a preview of what the camera is seeing as well. It's pretty choppy, but at least it gives you a basic idea of the field of view that you've got currently. Very cool. So have a quick look at BMW calendar as well. It shows you your calendar view of everything that you've got in your calendar on your phone as well. So you can scroll through the calendar, have a look at the various different days and what's in your calendar. All I have is just public holidays and the generic stuff that comes on your iPhone from standard. I don't use my iPhone for organization, so there's nothing in there. But if I was syncing it with my Outlook calendar or anything like that, it would all show up in here as well. So very, very good for business people on the go. All right, so we'll take a look at TuneIn Radio as well quickly. And we'll go Browse, Local. There's all our local stations. So say we want 2GB, for example. 
connecting. A funding model will ensure the financial security of all of our 16 clubs. Very cool. So it's important to understand that that data, and we'll switch that off again, that data is streaming from your mobile phone. So it's using the 4G connection on your mobile phone to get that stream. But it's very cool because it means you can listen to radio from pretty much anywhere around the whole world. So say we wanted to listen to, I wonder if you could listen to police radio. So we'll go scroll across. <laughs> I don't know. No, it doesn't look like there's any police stations in there. I've never actually used TuneIn Radio before. I always just listen to music on Spotify, but I thought I'd just load it up on my phone just in, as an example. We're going to trending. You can see BBC World News, ESPN, so all over the world, everything's there. Jump back out of that again. What other apps do we have that we can try? So Deezer is another music player app, does pretty much the same thing, Audible as well, Amazon Music. Glimpse is a location sharing app. I don't actually use that because I don't like to share where I am with people, but I do use Life360. So I'll launch Life360 on my phone. And if I go into Life360 on here, so it shows where my wife is, shows where I was last recorded. You can also change your um, circles as if you've got circles set up as well. And if I click on my wife, I can actually navigate to exactly where she is, call her. It's a little bit creepy, but yeah, so if I know where, if I need to navigate to where she is, I can just go start guidance. She's driving at the moment, so it's not very accurate, but if she was at an address or a specific location, it would take me there, so very cool. And again, none of this functionality was in the car at all before, which is really, really cool. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea of what's possible with this. Obviously, the more apps you have installed, the more stuff you can do, as long as the apps are compatible with the system. I'm not going to go through every single app on here because I think you get the idea of how the general gist of it works and different people will be interested in different apps. So that's it guys, I'm absolutely thrilled with the result. Now I hope this video has been helpful for you guys as well. Whether you knew that you could do this but you just weren't quite sure how the whole process works or you had no idea that this was even an option for your car, hopefully you've learned something in this video. So if you have, please make sure you smash that like button. Don't forget about our 10,000 subscriber giveaway as well, it's happening right now. And the details about that are linked in this video for you right here now. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video interesting and useful and I'll see you in the next one, bye.